ex-Muslim threatened with death and how he found out from the FBI. So I wanted to highlight the fact that we recently talked to Azad Farsani. Um, for those who do not know, Azad Farsani is an Iranian American who is a fairly prominent, uh, especially in uh, Persian speaking communities, critic of Islam. And he is an exiled scholar from uh, Iran who was ousted from the country after being interrogated by the authorities for a um, f for his anonymous writings in which he would criticize the regime online, dissect and criticize Islam. And recently, um, he was threatened. There were credible threats against him, and the FBI actually contacted him to inform him of these threats against him. And uh, Azad has been a frequent guest on the Persian side of Atheist Republic. And I was like, well, we need to go talk to Azad on, you know, the English side uh, and expose him to more people. So we recently talked to Azad Farsani about this recent incident and also about his background in general. And um, yeah, so I wanted to promote our, our conversation with him. And yeah, Armin, what did you think yeah, about our talk with Azad? I mean, I, can't, I was wondering why he was targeted specifically, because there's so many um, Iranians um, outside of Iran that have shows, YouTube channels, like um, Telegram groups, uh, Instagram you know, accounts, Twitter accounts that really go against Islam. But they go against Islam in a way that a lot of people are not used to. Like, they're really, really aggressively anti-Islamic, okay? And so proud of it, right? Um, but I was wondering, because we know this guy, and we love him, and he does really good work. Um, and I was wondering what made them want to target this guy, right? And again, we don't know if this was, like, a couple of butthurt individuals or was this the work of the regime, right? We have no idea, okay? I'm I'm more inclined to think like it was butthurt individuals because I don't know, but I don't want to get into why, why you know, the series or that. But one reason why he was targeted more than other people because he, his most of his work is anti islam Demacia Alinejad was targeted as well, but she is like really heavily political, anti regime, she anti the regime her, itself. And she's like one of the most important advocates against the regime. But I was wondering why this man who goes against religion mostly more than the regime, more than, I mean, no, actually he's also, he's also, he, he goes against the regime as well. Oh yeah. But yeah, because he has two main uh, things that he does. One, he targets Islam. Secondly, he, tar he, he leads a group of people called Barandas which like, like bandos are like bandos is a bigger group, but he has his own group of bandos people that are specifically against the regime as well. But um, Barandas but, means like topplers. You know, regime topplers changers. of the regime. Right. So I came to the, I, I think I said it on the show on Secular Jihadists. We invited him as a guest on Secular Jihadists. So make sure you go watch that. We interviewed him. It was really good. But I, in that show, I mentioned the reason why I think he was specifically targeted is because first of all, there's two reasons, right? First of all, he is one of, he he was educated by the regime as a person to support not Islam, not just Islam, but the Islamic uh, Republic's brand of Islam, like the Vilayat Fiqih version of Shia Islam, otherwise known as Khomeinism, right? So he was educated by their university specifically as a person to go and spread the Islamic regime's propaganda, the Islamic, um, the, the brand of Shia Islam that the regime wants in support of the regime itself, right? So he was he was deep within the circles and he was in touch with, um, he was friends and he rubbed shoulders with some of the highest ranking mullahs uh, close to regime in Iraq, right? For so, so for somebody, and he became an atheist while he was still in Iran because of studying Islam. And not only he became an atheist, he became extre like the, because of his studies of Islam, he became extremely anti-Islamic. Like he was disgusted by it, right? The more he studied it, right? 
and he dedicated his entire life to fight that right so one reason why might be what the reason one reason why this person is particularly sensitive for them is because of his association with people that were supposed to be supporting the thing that he's fighting the and being so close to some people that are extremely sensitive extremely close to even the office of the supreme leader right so him it's not ju it's not just what he says but who he is it's such a danger to the regime's propaganda right because if somebody like that could turn against the ideas of the regime and then everybody is a potential lost cause for them right uh, the message of like so for for people like us when we turn against islam they're like oh you're lost you're you're lost you don't know, even know what islam is right you have no idea what you're even talking about you're not even educated how could you even like you don't even understand islam you know you're an uneducated ridiculous you you know somebody that has um, some emotional um um something to prove something we got that we got hurt like we want to sin islam that messes with our lifestyle we want you know things like they have so many excuses for why we're against islam right but for someone like this who was trained by them was grow grew up in their circles and even was so close to people that are close to the supreme leader for somebody like that to turn on islam his his mere ex even without his message her mere his mere existence is a threat to the regime right um and second, a second reason why I assume, and these are just guesswork, I don't know why he uh, was a strict, more offensive to people than the rest of us, is because he ties in his anti-Islam work, and he does it in a scholarly way. Like he, he doesn't just like uh, read. Like he, he, his education was around Islam, right? So he come when he criticizes Islam, it comes across as very academic. And there's two kinds of people. We're in in the Iranian circles, where there the scholars who criticize and fight against Islam, and they speak very politely, very academically, and then there's a whole bunch of people that are like use the most insulting terms against Islam, and they're like separate from uh, scholars, right? But the you know, one unique thing about them is that he criticizes Islam in a scholarly way, and then he says the most profane discussing and insulting words against Islam at the same time. It's so awesome. it's, it's like he, he does it both. So people cannot be like, oh, you're using these words. You're an, un, you're an uneducated fool who uses such, you know, foul language. Like he's like, I went to a Mamsadic university. Check my, check my yeah, credentials. <laughs> I know because he has very, very academic lectures, but then he uses profound, uh, you know, uh, some, some very, very harsh language at the same time so put them together like he has he he attracts a kind of audience where we can attract like a lot of muslims can know that when he's speaking the way he, he that he comes from them so he's attracting those muslims because they're like they're listening to somebody speak in a way that you, they usually hear in a religious sermon or something like that like he recites the quranic verses and the hadith in the best arabic and recites like refers to like tafsirs and hadith in a way that you would think like an imam would and then he did all of a sudden start swearing in the most vile way against islam so it's just so confusing to the mind you know what i mean but at the same time he uses that and pivots to completely dismissing the legitimacy of the regime fr from its very core because the legitimacy on, of the regime rests upon islam so usually other people who attack the regime they attack it in a political way right but because he's attacking the very core of the regime, which is its Islamic, um, its legitimacy through being the representative of Islam, um, I think they sense a bigger danger uh, because unlike political activism, and like said, it's like cutting the cutting the root, and it's being attracted uh, and it's appealing to a certain community of people who the regime relies uh, on for its support, and that's why he's. More, I would assume that he's more dangerous than a lot of other people to the regime. So these are my theories, anyways. Anyways, you go, you should go. You guys should go follow. Uh, where where can people find this guy, by the way? Is oh he, well, uh, if you, well, first of all, you should go watch our full interview with him because what Armin said is like really just the tip of the iceberg of what we talked about with Azad. Um, we talk if you want more of the details of like what is this 
mess with the FBI. Like you can get the details there. Um, also, if you want to hear more about his background and Armin and Azad had a very interesting discussion about regime change as well, which I would, I would highly recommend listening to all of this. Um, the name of the episode is the ex Muslim threatened with death for blasphemy and how he found out from the FBI. So go search like secular jihadists name the title. And I also shared a link in the description. Um, so make sure to check out the full episode. And if you want to find out where you can follow Azad um, yourself, I uh, in the description of the Secular Jihadist episode, you can find like all his socials. On Instagram, though, he is Azad Farsani 5 But yeah, it was so nice to talk to Azad. My favorite part, guys, okay, this, this is the number one reason why you have to go check out this episode is because at the end, we reviewed videos of Azad when he was a Muslim in university. And then it's contrasted with the rest. He recites a poem, a beautifully written poem in Farsi, but the poem is about all the different ways that he shits on Islam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and at the end of the show, we go through and do a translation of that poem. It was so try. much fun. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, yeah, it was it was a real joy to talk to Azad. So more people should go check it out. Do you know? Um, oh, what's his Instagram again? By the way, uh, Azad Farsani five. The reason why I think it's five is because they keep attacking his Instagram attack uh, accounts and they keep taking it down. It's his and fifth that, account. It, it's his fifth account. Yeah, exactly. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.